Welcome to Shelters by Jesus Radio. I am Seth. I'm here with my co-host, Al. Good morning, Al. Great to be here. Our listeners in for a real treat today. We have a very special guest. Indeed we do. Someone that is uh, my pastor, someone I consider a mentor, a close friend, and oftentimes a confidant. Someone who's not afraid to kick me in the behind when I need it, and someone who's not afraid to give me little bits of wisdom that keep me moving forward. Pastor Spencer, thank you for joining us. Good morning, Seth. Thank you. Good morning, Al. Good morning. And we are joined by my daughter. Morgana. Hello. (laughs) Well, let's get this show on the road. Let's do it. So sit back and enjoy the trip with us. We're going to be interviewing Pastor Ed Spencer from the North Monmouth Community Church. And he and his church are big friends of the Shelters by Jesus ministry. And Morgana is actually here, too. That is Seth's daughter. Pastor, thank you for serving here. I know that you got involved in a while back, and he is a board member. And then you, you teach some Bible studies, and I know you right. pinch hit yeah. as well, and just friends and do a lot for this, for this shelter. So thank, thank you for being here. Thank you, Al. All right. Well, as I said earlier, Al, Pastor Spencer has been my pastor for a long time. He helped my wife and I with marriage counseling. He's someone that I can lean on when I'm having a bad day or I need some advice. He has no pity, though, when it comes to me and reminding me of what ministry is. Would you agree with that, Pastor? Amen. (laughs) But you are the pastor of North Monmouth Community Church. Privilege to be there. It's uh, been 26 years now. Now, is that the total time you've been in ministry or just at that church? Just at that church. I've been in ministry now 36 years. I didn't realize you were so old. (laughs) (laughs) He's well preserved. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) I'm taking a lot of preservatives, Al. People talk about preservatives in food. I like them. Amen. So you've been there for quite a while. I remember being there as a young teenager. Yep, And then me too. my family moved. And then circumstances brought us back to your church. And I want to talk about that a little later, but I want our audience to get to know you better first. So you serve on the board here at Shelters by Jesus. Correct. I'm a board member. And how long have you been a board member? Three years now. And I'd like you to kind of tell us that story, how you got involved with Shelters by Jesus. I mean, I know the story. I don't know if Al's heard it, but... I, I have indeed. It, uh, it involved some, some of Pastor's books, it is. I yes. believe. So Pretty yeah, we'd love to ha- have you share that with our audience. Thank you. Uh, it really is a unique story in that I was an assistant basketball coach at Monmouth Academy for, uh, for the girls' varsity team for almost 15 years. But probably five years ago... We were playing a game against uh, St. Dominic's Academy. So what's interesting about those games is before the games start, the coaches usually get together and talk. Well, John Berry, who is Pastor's brother, was the coach at St. Dom's. And so Coach Berry came over to talk to me because I had known him, obviously, from coaching in summer basketball. And he says to me, my brother has a ministry in Skowhegan. Now, Coach Barry knew I was a pastor of a church. And my first thought was, quite honestly, you know, do I have to talk about ministry? I really don't want to type thing. But Coach Barry was very good. And I said, great. He said, yeah, he runs a homeless shelter in a church. I said, good for him. Asked me if I'd heard of him. I said, no, I, I hadn't. Then he says, oh, by the way, he wrote a book. Good. He said he's selling the books for $10 a piece and all the proceeds go to the shelter. It's his first book. It's a wonderful. So I said to myself, you know what? Here's how I'm going to handle this. I told Coach Barry, I said, yes, I'll buy some books. I'll buy 10 books. Figuring, quite honestly, I'll give him $100. He'll stop talking about it, and I'll be done with it. But I can say we did something for the homeless. Typical idiotic response when you think of what people are able to do, and yet what our mind sometimes tells us. Here's 100 bucks. Get out of my way. So he hooked me up with Pastor Barry. Pastor Barry Facebooks me, and I said, yeah, great. Talk to your brother. Wonderful. Can I buy 10 books, and we'll send you $100? Pastor Barry said, well, typically I, I, I don't like to work that way. What I'd like to do is come up to your church, tell you my story, tell you the story of the shelter so that they can buy some books. And my first thought was, oh, no. I just <laughs> want. And I really did think to myself, man, I just want to buy 10 books and be done with this. I am uh, thankfully been married for 38 years. We have four children. I was full-time ministry. I have a full-time job. We had four kids. I just didn't have time for another ministry. And so I really was thinking, can I just give you $100 and get you out of my life? He said, I want to come up and share. So, okay, look, fine. It's one Sunday. 
I need a Sunday off anyway. Let him come up. He comes up, shares the message, fell in love with him, mm. fell in love with the ministry. And as they say, the rest is history. Uh, I'm now a board member. When, when he formed a new board, we got involved right away. And Pastor Barry and I formed this just really, a really unique friendship right away. And he invited me up. And I came up and realized, as, as silly as it sounds, folks, it's the truth. Homeless people are people too. Amen. But we just don't think of it that way. When we're on the outside, right, we're going through it. We don't think of that. No, we don't. We call them like the outcasts. People society likes to forget about. As you know, we just had a resident pass, Andy. And, you know, it, without us, he may not have had family. And oh. you think of the impact, right? It, and, and, and Seth, I know you know because you've been up here two years now. For all of us, I just thought it was you just people that are, you know, drug problems, drunks, whatever it is, and they just scoop you off the street. Because we were also helping out another homeless shelter, and so I thought I knew what it was about. So all of a sudden, before I know it, I'm neck deep in this homeless shelter thing. <laughs> And I just wanted to buy 10 books, give them 100 bucks, get them out of my life. <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, and, and now I'm net deacon. And the next thing I know, Pastor Barry's asking me if I want to be on his new board. And I'm thinking, sure, why not? And from that, just God has generated so much interest through the shelter. And you have such a great congregation. You, know, you just must be so proud of them because they have jumped on board. And they do things that people don't see in support of this ministry and other things. And so, I agree, Al. Uh, They've done a lot. We've had part of his congregation has raised money for Children's Playground. We've had several times where they'll bring food to us. We've had several times where they'll come up and cook in the kitchen. Dan in the food pantry that we have here at Shelters by Jesus will tell me that he says, boy, we got hammered today. <laughs> and I buy by who? And he goes, North Monmouth came up. He goes, we never know when they're coming, but when they come, they bring stuff. And it's good stuff. It's yeah. in-date, quality stuff. Uh, it just continues to bless. And I want your congregation and the listeners to know, too, that that's a gift that just keeps giving, too. It really Thank does. you, Al. Yeah. And it's unique you mention that because Seth knows. Seth has been with me to Good Shepherd, so he understands how Good Shepherd works. But when our people go to Good Shepherd, they shop for the shelter. Oh, that's so cool. Mm -hmm. I will get a message. Hey, look, they got this available. Wouldn't this be great for the shelter? I remember one time when before you folks were getting the meat from where you get it from now, we brought up ribs. Remember those dinosaur ribs? Oh, my goodness, yeah. <laughs> and uh, dinosaur ribs. They were, these things were huge. And they, a lot of them were Fred like, Flintstone. A lot of them yes. had the barbecue <laughs> sauce they've been marinating in. And, it's a lot of good stuff. I want to talk about North Monmouth and its impact a little later on because you guys have made a tremendous impact here. And you filling in sometimes for pastor yes. when he can't make it from your congregation volunteering just to come up and sometimes just clean something, move something. So North Monmouth, we consider them a sister church. And they jumped on board. There wasn't even a fight. I mean, you had to fight to keep them back. Amen. Well, and and then they graciously allowed us to have you too, Seth, and your family and Morgana. And yeah. what a great story that is someday. Yes. And, and no, we'll definitely get on that. Um, I, I hope so because that is it is unique. <laughs> but it is what's interesting, Alan, Seth, that is really unique that people don't understand the impact that you guys have had on North Monmouth. Because before the shelter, people at North Monmouth didn't think about homeless ministries. It just wasn't on our radar. And all of a sudden now, what the homeless shelter has done for us is perspective. That perspective of, I thought I was having a tough day. And then, and I tell people, you know what, if you really think life is tough and you're having a tough day, do me a favor, take a ride to Skowhegan and just walk in and realize what tough is. I've had some men, and Seth knows this, I've told some men, pick the phone up and call Seth. Don't tell him what you're going through. Just talk to Seth and see what on a daily basis, because they're people. And we think homeless uh, people that are homeless shelter are never selfish, never get mad. They're people, they're human beings, and they have issues too. And so the impact that you folks have had on our church body is incredible. Well, I think having a united purpose in a church, too, just lends to it. And then you start to see God pulling stuff off. So we wanted to keep this first episode sort of about the past. And so I want to ask you about the story. This guy with the tough exterior and the attitude problem and the dark cloud that came and hung out in the back of your church for a year and a half and wouldn't shake people's hands. And, you know... That would be me, folks. Yes. Uh, <laughs> We're all smiling. I, I, I knew what he was talking about. But, uh, you know, I came from a very rough 
hurt place. Mm. We were at a prior church that just we left but you know i showed up here and here i am at this church and and i'm like you know i know pastor spencer but you and maybe uh one other person i recognize Miriam. yeah um but you know i'm sitting here and i'm like christian love is fake all the stuff is fake i believe in the gospel but i need my family to go where i know the truth is being preached and i can't believe i remembered how to get to the church i just prayed and said god you're gonna have to steer I, i don't yeah, because you came from Turner. We did. And so we pulled into the driveway, and I just remember sitting there, and for like a year and a half, I was just depressed. Don't talk to me. Don't look at me. But two things happened there, and I, I want you to share your thoughts on it. But one mm-hmm. was, you guys didn't stop bugging me, and it was genuine. Mm-hmm. And then this one man named Vern would not <laughs> take no for an answer. He refused to walk away without shaking my hand, you know, and he just kept loving on me and loving on me. And then finally, these little cracks in my self-made armor started to appear. But then I don't want to tell too much of the story. I want you to have something to say. But now I'm here as a result of North Monmouth Community Church and your leadership and your guidance. What are your thoughts? Here's what's great about you mentioned Vern and Al and your years in ministry have run into Vern Keith. Vern loves the Lord. Mm. Uh, Vern and I's friendship, he is our senior elder, was built with he and I going on visitation, usually three nights a week, with him in my driver's seat going to visit new families. That's how the church was built. But Vern's attitude is, and it's unique because I remember Seth and Precious Morgana, uh, who at the time was shy, but most young teenage girls are shy, and she it was before she was a teenager. But I, what I remember also, sir, was your wife was good for, I mean, she'd carry this notebook, and, and she would take 10 or 12 pages of notes every sermon. It's incredible. But we have a time of greeting. And I could see Seth, I remember him, but Seth what I remember, too, was Seth would pivot away, look out the window, look down at his shoes, do anything to avoid eye contact. But you see, that was a challenge to Vern. And that's his personality, mm-hmm. right? It, it is. If, yeah. if you tell me I can't, that you got this hot exterior and you're not going to love me, I'll show you. So Vern was the first one to penetrate that, as it were. And then slowly but surely, you uh, and your family, Precious Morgana, played the violin for us. And those small things started happening. And I could see you coming out of your shell. People just loved up on you, as Mm. it were, which is what the body is for, right? That's what we're here for, is to love up on one another. But here's the interesting thing. So, and Al, you mentioned it. If I can just briefly go into how you ended up here. So... In the meantime, and my favorite Al Tienman story was one of the characters I met when I first came up, it was Tinker. Caustic, abrupt. And what you realized with Tinker is that was his, just it was his personality, you know? But what I loved about Tinker was whenever I would preach up here, Tinker would be the first to really get act, you know, he would speak. If I asked a question, he'd answer it. But I fell in love with Tinker. And so, and I get my favorite Al Tienman story, folks, is when Tinker was on his deathbed, I just cried. Mm-hmm. I walked in and Al Tienman's feeding him pudding and Tinker's dying. And here's this man just laying your life down for Tinker and you were yeah. feeding him pudding and I couldn't take it. I said hi. I had to walk out because it was very, it just, it was, but you were there. Mm-hmm. For Tinker. So to back to Seth. So the shelter all of a sudden needs a director. The gentleman had walked away. And, and, and there were some issues there. And I was on the board then. So I had to deal with them. And so Seth and I started talking about it. Because Seth was at a point in his life where he needed ministry. Everybody, if you're in a local church, you need ministry. Amen. You just need ministry because it connects you to your church. It connects you to your body. Ministry for me, for Precious Morgana, was playing that violin, Mm. right? That's ministry. You take that talent that you have. So he and Seth and I started talking about what if. Seth and I were talking one day, and Seth says to me, out of the blue, you know, Pastor, I think God might be calling us to Skowhegan. I said, really? At the time, you wanted out the place in Turner. They were going to, the rent was going to get crazy Mm -hmm. because they really wanted to sell this place. But anyway, so I said, okay, I talked to Pastor Barry. Pastor Barry's first thought was, he said, well, I'll keep that in mind, but we got this guy and I think he's going to come on. Okay. He he said he had three guys. Three three guys. That's right. There were three guys. Right. So it's okay, Pastor Barry. So the first guy. Yeah, yeah, I'm quite sure he's going to do it. No problems. Okay. So Seth and I talking, and Seth says, okay, well, you know, I really, and it was kind of unique because I remember thinking to myself, Seth, you don't get it. He's got somebody. 
Yeah, I know, but Pastor, I just know. I just like, oh, Seth, he's got somebody. Will you let it go? Seth just can't. He knew there was something there. It's okay. Two days later, Pastor Barry calls him back. Well, that guy backed out. Oh, but I got another guy, and, and I think he's got the right personality. He's an older guy. It's okay, Pastor. Okay. So Seth and I talk, and I said, Seth, it looks like this. Seth says to me, Pastor, I'm telling you, I just I, I just know. It's okay. Rolling my eyes like, no, you don't, but that's okay. Go, go, go. Two days later, Pastor Barry calls me. That guy backed out. And I said, well, <laughs> Pastor Barry said, you know, Seth and Tia and Precious Morgana want to come up. Seth knows. Seth just, and I said, just so you know, he really feels called. Okay. But I got this other guy that I just know, he says, it's going to work out. I just, it's okay. No problem. Probably another week went by, right? Yeah, yeah. Talking to Pastor Barry. That guy can't come. I said, Pastor Barry, you know what? Maybe God's telling you and I, talk to Seth. Just talk to him. Let's set up a, a, a six-month try. I said, whatever you want to call it. It doesn't matter. Seth knows he's called. the cuss in the back of my mind, and I say this in love, it'll get Seth off my back about this Gauhegan. <laughs> <laughs> because you just knew you were called. Yeah. I didn't. I didn't get it. And Tia was for it. Tia was oh, for it. Morgana and Precious was Morgana yeah. was for it. So That's amazing. Yeah. 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 And we all felt called. And it was funny because Pastor Barry was like, well, you know, I'm going to give this guy a chance. And mm-hmm. and then uh, finally they agreed to let me come up. But Pastor was like, we're going to give you like a 90-day trial. And I wasn't here two weeks. And he says, you got the job, you know. <laughs> and it, I don't want to make it sound like it was sunshine and rainbows. It has been the hardest thing I've ever done in my life. Oh, you and I have had many discussions. That first year, you and I talked almost every week. Oh, it was crazy. Because you kept wondering, was I listening correctly? (laughs) Well, that, and you know, I've never been in a real ministry before where you're dealing with people. You're not a show up at Sunday helicopter pastor. You know, you're in people's lives now. And then, I, you know, I had all my trouble. I had my PTSD. I had a bunch of things going on. So how am I supposed to manage me? And then 60 people, and it was rough. It was rough for a long time. And remember, time. when you came up, and Al, because I know you were part of this, when you came up, the house you're in now wasn't available, so you lived in a... A camper for 44 camper. days. Precious Morgana was with 45 people and 95 dogs. Now, it wasn't that bad, people, but... But it felt like it. Yeah. There were, like, what, five of you in there? There was... Maybe more than that. Yeah, Your Grammy. Like that. Yeah, my Grammy, and my cousin, my dad, my uncle, my mom, and then my cat, and then, like, three dogs. So, and folks, what was unique was that the house wasn't going to be available. It was supposed to have been just a couple of weeks. Ended up being almost a month. 44 days. Yeah, Four, yeah so he, you, you remember. <laughs> but that whole thing, what's interesting, Alan, that whole walk is this, that you knew you were called. I didn't. I quite honestly didn't. And selfishly, because I didn't want to lose you guys on Sunday morning, because I knew, you know, and it was unique because we went through the, well, you know, we can come up every once in a while. No, you won't, because here's what's going to happen, Seth. It's, when December and the cold weather comes, you're not driving to And by the way, why would you? Because you got a church right here, right? But you, know, but you knew. You absolutely yeah. knew. Yeah. Uh, and again, I think even you went through that period of, see, I've always said, and I, I've said it a lot. And again, Al, you're going to relate to this. It's easy for Ed Spencer to be Pastor Ed here because I'm the guy that jumps in on a helicopter, right? Comes and preaches a message or drops off food or whatever it is. And then I get to get in my car and leave. You two are here. It's so different for you folks. And that's why to me, you know, people say, you know, it, it's easy for, well, it is easy for me. But that first six months that you went through it, you didn't know. There's no way you can know, right, what, what you're in for when you come up. Here. Yeah, but I'll be honest with you, Pastor. I've been here now for two and a half years, and the first two years of my time here were mission impossible. Yeah. I mean, God God dragged me through it all and taught me what it was to be in the ministry. And I remember praying one day and said, God, you know, I've, I've got all these people. And all of a sudden, I got this vision of Moses looking at me going, you had 60 people. I had two and a half million, and you want to cry? You know, so that's literally what started to change my attitude about things. And then just trusting in God, 
taking it day by day instead of week by week, and then having you as my mentor, you help my wife and I through marriage counseling and, you know, just having North Monmouth to go home to once in a while and say hi, because we, you know, we call ourselves the official unofficial missionaries. missionaries and of, you are the missionaries you mm-hmm. actually it's official we'll make it official but you are missionaries from the church and the unique thing is like all missionaries you got no idea what you're getting into until you get into it well this is what i'm humbly grateful for if you hadn't connected to pastor barry and the two of you are amazing friends right now yeah i wouldn't have a ministry you wouldn't you're absolutely correct you yeah. wouldn't be here because so, we wouldn't know about this place. no and so it's incredibly humbling and i think about what god did how he maneuvered pieces around to get me here and it really humbles me you know i call him el maestro he's the master and he does really orchestrate some things and we can look back and see with a little better vision now that even two years ago bringing Seth on board, or even before that, Pastor connecting with you, Pastor Ed and and Morgana, being part of this whole ministry too. She's an important part too, and friends with the kids that are here, and you were being groomed too. Seth was being groomed, and and he has brought so many favorable things to the shelter here. You know, your military background even too, you know, and just the order and the expectations and the follow-through. He's not a man that's afraid to step up and call someone out if he needs to. And that's a hard thing in ministry. And it's unique you say that, Al, because when I came in this morning, and I think back to, I've seen this two or three times, I think back to when I first came here visiting, they were chopping up wood for the winter. And there were probably just one or two men out there. And there were a lot of men standing around watching. I pull in today, there's five men out there cutting wood. There's a guy driving a machine to go load the wood. Why? Because the expectation from Seth is, do you want to stay warm this winter? Yes, good. There's a pile of wood. You're going to go cut it. Well, God tells us this. If a man shall not work, he shall not eat. And so I'm trying to pass that on. Now, I've got guys that are 70 years old who will bust their butts for me. And then some guys that are 20 years old who you can't find any time there's work to be done. And I've worked very hard to change that. And I don't want to take the credit. I want to say, like, people come up and say, Seth, you've done so wonderful here. Well, thank you, but it is God. It's God's spirit, his will, his ability. And I'm just being obedient. And I'm, and if the atmosphere has changed, as some people say, it's, it's so different here. Well, that's the Holy Spirit. That isn't Seth. And it's unique you say that because in reality, and I loved what Al said, w- one of my favorite books is by Dr. Ravi Zacharias, God mm. rest his soul, was, I believe, the greatest apologetist apologist of my lifetime that I heard. There are a lot of them, but he wrote a book, one of my favorites, called The Grand Weaver. And it's just what you were talking about, Al, the, you know, the El Maestro, but The Grand Weaver is that one who, and you think of the fine threads, the fine threads. Had I not been, and I get admit this quick, but, and we'll save it sure. for, the, for the next sure. segment, uh, I'll, but talk about the Grand Weaver, and you think about those threads, those thin threads that we're all held together by. Amen. Well, how can we completely meet somebody in just one session? I hope you can stick around for another one. Uh, I certainly Pastor will. Pastor Ed. It goes yes. by so fast. It yes. really does. It's, it's, it's a fast time, but we've enjoyed this session, and folks, I hope you have too. You heard us talking about being involved with the homeless shelter here, and just what a blessing that is. And so, you know, folks, as listeners, you can be part of this too. We'd love to have you stop by, first off, and just join us for a service, Bible study. Come on over and have a meal. We'll give you a tour. We'd love to give tours, but you can also contact us a number of different ways via our website, sheltersbyjesus.com, sbjradio.com, and you can write us at Shelters by Jesus, 12 McClellan Street, Skowhegan, Maine, 04976. Call us here too, 207 474 8833. We'd love to have you. I hope you enjoyed the session. Stick around. We're hoping to record another couple sessions and we'll continue with this discussion. Thank you. Amen. And Pastor Ed, thank you for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for having me, man. Morgana, you didn't get to talk a lot, but she will next time. I'll make sure of it.